started out in 2009. And I have to give you the history of why this is probably going to be the most prophetic encounter I have ever done. And why I believe that this one is going to be life changing, life changing, as to never change back again. In the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, and I'm going to be reading from the fifth verse. From the fifth verse. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll explain why I have this on and why you see all of that. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and we thank you for this word that you have birthed out in me over the years and we give you praise for it now. And we thank you because you're calling our lives to be changed, never to change back again. And so we ask asking for your divine inter intervention and your divine help tonight that you will speak what it is you're trying to say to your people and that we would have open ears to hear you and that you would breathe on us so that we would never, ever, ever be wanderers in the spirit and we would know the direction of your divine plan and purpose for our lives. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. I started this, it's still not right. I started this, um, I'm on eight and I don't want to go any higher than that. So I'm, I'm doing this for a reason. Yeah. I started this in 2009 and I have to give you a little history on it. In 2007, I was probably going through one of the worst times of my life. And during that time, it was, I would say it was difficult because my father had passed and my mother was feeble and, and there was just a lot going on and, and not really being available for people to prophesy into my life or speak into my life. I was somewhat um, handicapped. And I used to say to the Lord almost on a daily base, you know, God, how in the world am I going to come through this? How, how am I going to get to where I'm trying to go? And how does a person come out of trauma and how do they come out of dark places and i'm talking about a dark place to the point that uh people have heard me say it often that that you know it was so dark until black was a color you know literally and so i'm, I'm asking the lord for his help and so it was i ran across a scripture that said and david encouraged himself in the lord and so that was difficult to do because I didn't know, I didn't know how to encourage myself. I didn't know how to talk to myself because other things was talking in my head. And so sometimes when you have a lot of confusion going on in your head and you're hearing a lot of things, you, it, it, it's difficult for you to focus on what God is saying to you about you. And so I started asking God for his help. And I was going through the word and I was, you know, Apostle, I was, I was praying and, you know, I, I was putting on my white dress and everything that I knew to do, I was, I was doing it. I was, you know, just going in prayer and all of the above. And, and the Lord allowed me to, I would have to say, fumble up on something that I didn't know was the plan of God and the way God works. And so I was just doing it out of obedience. If the Lord told me to do something, I would do it. And so I got to a place where 
every time I would, I would hear something negative, I would go to God. You know, because at that time, I didn't, I didn't really have no friends. Amen, somebody. And so God became my friend. And so I would go to God, and I would go to his word. And I found myself that um, when it got rough, I would, I would, I would consecrate and, and I, would, I would take an anointed bath with olive oil and I would put on white and I would tie my head up and I would just go in prayer and shut everything down for about two or three days. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I was talking to the Lord. And so I did that often. Every time I did that. Like I, di I didn't miss it. And when people couldn't call me or anything like that, you know, and this was when I was past the suicide level. You know, this was, this was, you know, past suicide. You know, I tried that, took the pills, woke up, you know, so it wasn't for me to die. Amen. <laughs> Not when you take ambience and you wake up, it, well, it ain't for you to die. So I had taken the pills and, and, and I woke up, and so I, I kind of, kind of felt like that was foolish, you know, for me to attempt to take my own life. And, 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 and so I'm, I'm saying, you know, it, I, I know it's bad, but, you know, I, I can't even die. So what am I doing? So the Lord just had me to, I just kept doing that. And one day, the Lord said to me, I want you to study the brain. I want you to study the brain. And so me being religious well what does the brain got to do with the holy ghost because you know i need i need the power of the holy ghost you know i need i need god to move and i need god to just work this out for me so so a part of me kind of struggled with it and i kind of struggled with it because for some reason i could not make the connection with what god had created and what he said I, I wasn't able to make the connection that God didn't write this Bible without his creation in mind. That he wrote the Bible so that the creation can maintain itself. Oh God. He wrote this word because there is, there is no other method of teaching that can maintain what he has created. Because we were created by a word. Okay. We were created by a word. So he said, I want you to study the brain. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to study the brain. So the Lord had me doing this since 2009. And I was studying the brain and just kind of, you know, and he said, now this is the way this operates and this is the way that operates. And if you do this, then this is what's happening to you. And, 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 and this is why you are, you, you, you're being emotional and, and, and you got to put more attention on this. And I, didn't, I had never gone to school for any of this. God just told me to study it. And so not only did I study it, but I started governing my life by it. And that's why people were kind of confused and, and a little bit uh, kind of taken back that every time trauma hits my life, I bounce back. You know, so people kept saying, well, how is she doing this? How is she, how is she bouncing back like that? How is she, you know, getting up off the ground? And how is, how is she enduring all of what they're saying about her? How is this woman moving forward when it looks like the world is against her? And how is it that she looks unbothered? And how is it that she's not bothered? And how is it that she's not moved by these things according to the book of Acts? That I may finish my course with joy. So by 2011, I met a man by the name of Dr. Jerry Mangazi. And I went to Daystar to preach and Dr. Jerry Mangazi was at Daystar. And he was a brain specialist that operated in the right hemisphere of the brain. That's his specialty. And his specialty is to help people get through trauma. And so I was a guest on Daystar, and Dr. Jerry Mangazi was a guest as well. And so we sat at the table. 
and we started talking and we went live on television and he was he was talking and so when the broadcast was over with he said to me can I can I test your brain he said can I can I take you through a test and I said I said yes at first I was a little looking at him a little and he said he said I, the reason why I want to take you through a test because I really want to be able to help you he said because I know that you've been through a lot of trauma and he said and and, and um, that's my specialty and I said okay you know all right so you can you can test my brain so we sat there and he uh, gave me all of his whatever and and I took the test and so I went in there to change my clothes and he was grading my test and when I came out he said, do you have a few minutes so I can talk to you? And I said, yeah, you know, I, I got a few minutes. And he said, um, something strange happened where your test is concerned. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I've only seen a brain like this in two other people in the history of my career. And he said, I see all of this trauma in the front of your brain but I also see that there's a spot in your brain for reasoning that is overloaded with God and so for some reason the trauma is not governing your life what's in your God spot is what's governing your life and can you tell me how you did that he said your brain is a phenomenon and he said, I think this is your calling. And I said, I, I, you know, I run around church speaking in tongues and shout, I, I don't think it's my calling. You know, he said, no, no, no. I really think that you can really help people because you've done this without a doctor's assistance. You, you, you've tapped into something that I've spent more than 20 years trying to teach people. And I'm meeting somebody that's on automatic in this thing. And so I kind of just brushed it off. And I went on and, you know, went on about my business. And here we are, eight years later, I run back into Dr. Mangazi. And I said to him, I think you were right. This is what God is calling me to do. This is the next dimension of my ministry is to help people to find a sound mind. Okay, I'm just going. Because we can pretend all we want to. We can, you know, we can be in church jumping and shouting, speaking in tongues, running around, giving offerings, all that. But, 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 but 85 to 90 percent, nobody in this building or watching by, by television or any form of media can say you don't have a mind problem. Everybody does. Because we're living in a we're living in a trauma prevalent society that there is no way in the world that you have not experienced some kind of trauma that is governing your life right now. The things you don't have is because of the trauma that you've been through. Oh God, who 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 is he gonna help tonight? Who is he gonna help tonight? So Then I got my degree, and then I said, okay, God, then I'm going to do this for real. And so I went back, got my stuff, got my notes, and said, okay. I presented it to Dr. Mangazi, and he agreed to write the foreword to my new book, The Brain Changed. And he said, this is phenomenal. This is, this is absolutely phenomenal. And so then I had to make some decisions because... I learned that even when you pray, if your mind is not properly positioned, then you are praying from another sphere that is not touching God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because the first thing we got to understand is that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. And most of our prayers are, are fear activated. 
We're not praying because we trust God or we believe God. We're praying because we're afraid. Come on, somebody. We're full of anxiety in our prayers. How do I know that? Because we're not praying the word. We're praying the issue. So really what we're doing in prayer is trying to go through self-therapy. Because that's what you do with a therapist. You sit down and they let you air out everything you're feeling. It ain't that they helping you. They just allowing you space to just say it all. I hate him and I want to kill my husband. I want to stab all my kids. And then you get it out and you safe. <laughs> you, are, you are able to say in, in therapy, I hate my mama. You know, my daddy really think I like him, but I hate him too. That's all it is. They, you don't come out of there helped. They give you an opportunity to air it out. Come on here, somebody. And God wants us to be effective in our prayers. He don't want us to be in his presence constantly airing out stuff. He wants us to be instruments of what he wants to do in our lives. And the only way you can be an instrument, you got to pray his word. You got to get on his side. You got to agree with God. Okay. Whew, watch this. Watch this. So here we go. Here we go. There is an excellency in the gospel. There's something that is excellent. Turn the house up. In the gospel. Number one, it renews the mind. The mind slash soul. It convinces the conscious. It converts the heart and it renders to all a new life. Okay. So then in order for us to understand that, we got to go back to how we were wired. We got to go back to how we, I'm telling you, God going to change your life tonight. We were wired with natural optimism bias, which means when God created us, we were created with all things positive and confident and we were created to be successful. The negative gene was not in us because we were made of God. This was before there was a serpent. Come on somebody. So everything about us was perfect. Everything about us was doable. We were confident. We can do anything. We were superhuman beings. Okay. Lord have mercy Jesus. We were extraordinary. But watch this. Watch this. Until fear came. Until there was an Adam. Watch this. Watch this. So then God didn't get really, you know, he didn't get really bent out of shape even though he already knew that they had sinned because they had, they had taken another opinion because many things will come. So I want to help you understand something. When things come to you, thoughts come to you every day, 24 hours a day because you are a thinking being. You are thinking when you are sleeping. What causes you to become who you are is the thinking that you keep. So with that being said, you are a direct result of everything you have thought. Okay, I'm, I'm talking to somebody today. You are a direct result of everything that have gotten in you that you decided to keep. Because thoughts are going to come every day, all day long. Thoughts are going to come. Thoughts, all kinds of thoughts. And because you're a Christian, the devil is going to bring thoughts of suicide, thoughts of hate, thoughts of depression. But it's the ones that you savor. It's the ones that you keep. It's the one that becomes a part of your mind. Come on, somebody. It's coming to my brain, but I'm saving it in my mind. How do I know that I'm saving it in my mind? Because I'm becoming what I'm thinking. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm becoming what I am saving. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to help us. I'm going to help us. 
Then what is wrong with me? Then what is wrong with me? Then I'm going through something called a dysfunction in my belief system. Because, let me help us tonight. Faith is not a Christian word. Okay. Faith is a belief system. You said you came in here tonight. You sat down in these chairs. Nobody came in here filling the chair. Nobody came in here saying, well, I wonder if the chair going to hold me. Because as a baby, you were sat in the chair. When you got to be two and three years old, you were sat in a different chair. When you got to be 15 years old, you sat in a different chair. When you got to be a grown person, you sat in a different chair. Are you hearing me? So you learn to build a confidence in the chair by way of experiencing the chair. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Let me go on this side. I got faith in chairs because I was raised to believe that when I sit down, the chair would hold me. And, and watch this. And that was all of our lives. Can you only imagine what we listen, where you would be now if you were raised from a child to constantly believe the word of God? Then you would never cast it. You would use it and detach it from your feelings because you would operate in a way that says, I don't have to feel this to know that it works because I've experienced this. So, so, so watch this. So we, 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 we're, we're having a problem because, because our faith system is dysfunctional. Because we've been taught part personality, part hype, part emotion, and little word. Okay. The Bible said he's a very present help in a time of trouble, not a very present hype. Right. So we believe the Lord based upon, I like that preacher. I like that evangelist. I like that prophet. Come on, somebody. And so part of what we believe in is, is, is the hyper personality. And that's why when the personality is nowhere around you, you don't have the faith that you need to stand on what God is calling you to stand on. Why do you think you feel all powerful when we're in here? You feel all powerful because we're in here. Because guess why? Guess why? Guess why? We are, we are actually sitting, God, I got to tell the truth, in a hype system. I'm not hearing y'all. We're in a hype system. But it's time to be helped. Because when you go out of here, you got to be able to stand on what God is saying. And you got to know that you know, that you know, not feel, know in whom I believe. Okay. So Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking away. From all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and bringing it to maturity and perfection. So that lets me know that all behavior is belief driven. Uh, I, I'm going to say that again. All behavior is belief driven so when you see people act out of character it's their belief system something is wrong with their belief system come, come on somebody come on somebody so then he said looking away looking away from all that will distract you to Jesus looking away from all that will distract you to Jesus to Jesus who gives the first incentive for what we believe which means Jesus is the person that gives us our first incentive for our belief system. We have no belief system if we don't have Jesus. And if we don't have his word, we don't have Jesus. 
Because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the Word was made flesh. The Word was God himself. Then John 1 and 14 said, and the Word became flesh and, watch this, took up residence among us. Okay. 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 So I don't have no faith if I got 10 scriptures. Because we, listen, we're trying to, we're trying to fill this thing. Come on, somebody. You're, try, you're trying to fit. I, I feel like going on. There's going to be some days you don't feel like going on, but you're going to go on. Oh, is God talking to somebody up in here? Is he talking to somebody up in here? There's going to be a whole lot of days you don't feel it. So we can't go by that song. I feel like going on. Because Jesus, watch this. He is the incentive of what I believe. And if I don't read my word, if I don't have my word, I do not have faith. I got a feeling. Okay. Okay, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. We're going. The first incentive of what I believe is I don't know how to believe. I don't know how to believe if he don't give it to me. I don't know what to believe if he don't give it to me. So if you say I believe God, then what scripture are you standing on that supports your belief? Okay. 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 Lord Jesus, this, 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 this going to be, this, go, this, this going to be something. This going to be something right here. What scripture are you standing on? What? Well, well, I believe God because I'm, I'm believing God for, you know, for him to open up a door. What, 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 what scripture are you, are you, because he ain't walking around here just giving favors. Okay. Okay, I'm messing with y'all because you, you know, you won't hype. You want somebody to tell you slap your neighbor high five and turn around three times and it's going to be over. And that's a bunch of foolishness because it ain't going to be over. Because you got to process through this. And watch this, and you cannot control attacks because attacks are going to come and they're going to keep on coming and keep on coming and keep on coming because you are a Christian. But you got to learn how to respond to what you are hearing. I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to? According to the brain map, it's not, listen, it's not what comes at you that affects your life, that affects your brain, that affects your body. It is how you respond to it. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me up in here. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Medical scientists have proven that, that there was a switch in your brain that when you respond to something negatively, you start dying that very minute. There's a switch that is turned on in your brain that says, start shutting this body down because they don't want to live. God, have mercy, Jesus. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear that? So the minute something happens to you and, and, and you go off on the deep end and you start hollering and screaming and, and going off, the mind, the brain turns a switch off and it says, start changing the cells because negativity gets under the skin of the DNA and it's changing your very body. Why you acting a fool? Let me tell you something. And let me help you with this one. And that's why anybody that's talking about you negatively, you are killing them. Okay, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't have time to respond to that foolishness because they are dying daily. Every time they open their mouth about you, they are dying. Oh my God, the switch is turned on. One in a bind them is killing you. Oh, Jesus. Question. And the person that won't leave you alone, they are displaying signs of being suicidal. No, you don't want to hear me. You don't want to hear me. They display signs of being suicidal. They're really speaking out loud. Come on, somebody. Because they don't care nothing about their life. Who am I talking to? 
That's why you can't afford to respond in a negative way. Not when he said that I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I can't give you my life. Who am I talking to? Who is God preaching to? Jesus. Jesus. 99% of every sickness in your body is based upon your mind. People are experiencing every day summatization. You know what summatization is? Summatization is symptoms in my body, but the doctor can't find out what's wrong. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Why can't the doctor find out what's wrong? Why can't the doctor find out what is wrong with you? Why they just can only pick one? Because the more negativity you carry in your body, the more negativity you carry in your mind. You don't hear me. Whatever part of your body you have not taken care of, that's the part that starts breaking down first. And then the body starts talking to each other. So I want you to picture yourself laying in a hospital right now. I want you to imagine yourself where the doctors have said they've given up. And so they're waiting for the kidney to shut down, then the liver to shut down, then the lung to shut down, then the heart. That's what's happening to you right now. You're shutting down. Oh my God. Y'all sit down because I got to I gotta do this. I got to do this. You're quitting on you. You're giving somebody else the power to take your life. I don't care what they say about me. I won't say it. I won't defend it. Okay, sit down. Let me let me let me just let me just let me just do this. Let me just do this. Ooh. 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 My God. My God. And some people say, well, you know, Dr. Bottom, you know, I've, I've been really going through something, and, you know, the doctor got me on medicine. You're not a machine. So the doctor's trying to give you medicine. But you can't watch this. There is no medicine in the world that can manage your mind. So what they're doing is they're giving you medicine so that they can cut down on your responsive reactions in your brain. And that's keeping you in a cycle every day. Because if you don't take your medicine, you go back to acting crazy. So you're not getting better. You're just being held as a prisoner to your present. I'm not hearing y'all. So you don't need medicine. You need a mind transformation. Okay, take this pill. And this pill is going to stimulate the part of the brain that act like a false dopamine. That act like a false tryptophan. It's a feel good thing. Y'all, y'all, come on somebody. Uh huh. Because they want you to feel good because they can't help you. So they want you to feel better. In your chaotic issue. Because they don't have the answers for it. Let's, let's find out why they don't have the answer. Let's find out. Genesis 1. 26 through 27. Okay. There was a discussion. Somebody say a discussion. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on with me. Say a discussion. You better come on with me. I'm trying to help you. You ain't got no money for no therapist. You better take this. Don't sit up here acting like you want to shout. Yeah, we're going to dance. We're going to shout. Come on, somebody. This is how you get free. That's why you have a reason to shout. 
It says, Father, the discussion. This was a discussion among the triune of God. Father, it said, God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, watch this, and over all of the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So when he said, let us make, let us make man in our image. And then he told us to be ye holy for I am holy. Listen to this. Listen to this. The key word is likeness. So then the, listen, the part of the letters of holy H O means to attract attention and L Y means likeness. So when he's asking us to be holy, he's asking us to be in his likeness because that's how I created you. Okay. He said, we're going to create man in our likeness. So be ye holy for I am holy. Is saying, come on, I want to track you back to the likeness of how you were created. Okay, okay, okay. Somebody, somebody say, you, 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 Lord Jesus, you helping us. You helping us. You helping us because I'm going to help us in a minute. Watch, watch this, watch. So, so, so God created man in his own image, in the image, and here it is again, likeness of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. Watch this. So then Genesis 2 and 4, when you get there, at this time now, there was no plant, there was no beast, there was no, 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 no rain. So we're talking about now the history of how and when things were made. Watch this. This is the history of the heavens of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. 2 and 6. But there went up a mist fog vapor from the land and watered the whole surface of the ground. Verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Okay, here it is. Here's a catch. What is a, what is a soul? Man became a living soul. <laughs> this is going to bless you. Man became a living soul. It says here, watch this. The soul comprises of the mental abilities of a living being. It is reasoning, feeling, consciousness, memory, perception, thinking, and character. It needs character because character displays the condition of the mind. I'm not hearing y'all. So man became a thinking mind. He did not blow into man his own mind. He blew his mind into man. You became the soul of God. Oh, God. Lord have mercy. The soul of God in the earth realm. The soul of God. That's what I want y'all to be. I want y'all to be my thinking, my feeling, my memory, my perception, my character, my mindset in the earth. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. That's what I want y'all to be. And see, the reason why God didn't get all that way, because he said, okay, I already know. I already know everything. So you know what, Adam? Y'all going to go and do what y'all going to do, because Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world was laid, so I already got a savior in my back pocket for your foolishness. Watch this. So when I am saved, I am, I am being converted back to my original creation. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. Now we're going, we're going, <laughs> we got to, we got to, we got to dig into that because I don't see that. But that, that's what it's supposed to be. Now, now watch this, y'all. Watch this, watch this. This is going to help so, so that's what the soul is. Then, then how does my brain relate to my soul? How does, how does, how does my brain relate to that? What is, what is going on in me? 
how, how is that possible? Okay, watch this. So what is the brain? Why you got a brain? Why everybody in here got a brain? Why you watching by media got a brain? The brain is the provider of the mind. Being that the mind is the invisible operative component, therefore it must use the brain as its form of display. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. What, what, Dr. Bynum, I, I don't... I, what? No, because the mind, watch this. The brain is a provider. The brain is a provider. It stands in the middle between the outside and the inside. So when something comes to you, it comes to you by way of your processing factor, which is your brain. Then your brain processes it and decides to put it in your memory. And watch this. There are everything that you see and do and hear, it goes to your memory. You have 10 seconds before you reject it as this is not my memory. And I'm not going to keep this. That's what the Bible said in the book of James. Do not say that the Lord has tempted me because the Lord tempts nobody. But it says when a man is drawn away from his own lust and that lust is conceived. Oh God. Wait a minute. Then it becomes sin. And that sin breeds death. Come on somebody. That's what the Bible said. It's not what comes, goes into a man's mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of his mouth. Why? Because if it comes out of his mouth, it had a chance to stay in his soul. Oh y'all. You're going to taste some vomit, but it's your responsibility to throw it up. But if it comes out of your mouth, it's because it's now entered into your heart. Conceive. Conceive. When he conceives it. We're not talking. I know conceive means pregnancy, but this going this gonna, this gonna to help you. Conceive. He said, look that up in a dictionary. The word, when he has conceived it. When he has conceived it in himself. When he has taken it as his own. I'm going to help us so good. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to give it to you. It, it says here, conceive. Conceive, this is where I decide to keep the thought as my own. Then at some point in time, that which you have conceived will be displayed. So what is conceived? According to the dictionary, it says to form or devise a plan or idea in the mind. Come on, y'all. That's what the dictionary said. It said to form a mental representation of a thing. Now, why does that, why is that? That when I conceive it, then I imagine it. But in studying the brain, this is what I want you to understand. The brain does not know how to separate what is real from what is imagined. They gave a person a test that imagined that a dog was chasing them. And then they gave a person a test that the dog was chasing them. The test came out the same. Because whatever you imagine to your brain is real. Okay. Good Lord have mercy. So you can't say, I just imagined that. No. If you imagine that, that is a reality in your spirit. Y'all, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Where was the saints at tonight? Where y'all at tonight? Uh-uh, no. I know you can't say amen because you think all those little nasty thoughts that you have, it's okay. At least I didn't do it. But you did it. I'm not hearing y'all. You did it. You imagine him. You imagine yourself sleeping with him. You slept with him. The brain don't know how to decipher imagination from real. tell us in 10 and 5 casting down imaginations and every hot thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Christ the word oh God okay okay I I I, I. I, I'm, I'm just 
Lord, have mercy. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. No, no, no. We can't, we can't act like, well, that's, that's the physical and I'm in the spirit. All of this go together. God, I'm not hearing y'all. All of this go together. Your brain is a component of your salvation. Your brain is a part of your living. You're not living outside of your brain. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. You're not having some spiritual experience in your brain. Listen, and your brain is not responsible. Your brain is a processor of every thought that comes into your head. I'm not hearing y'all. And so therefore, the mind, watch this, gives the brain orders. So whatever you're doing that is not like God, or whatever you're doing that is like God, you took that in. You process that. You say that. You conceive that. And then the mind told the brain, now go do that. The brain doesn't, doesn't control the mind. The mind controls the brain. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Is somebody getting some help? See, because, because in studying the brain, Dr. Burris, I learned this. That there is no such thing as a spontaneous response. No such thing as a spontaneous response. Every response that a person gives, whether it's negative or positive, it is a prepared response. Just like this. I'm going to tell you, it's prepared. It's prepared. It's not, it's not, it's not spontaneous. Huh, come on, somebody. If you slap somebody, that's already in you to say, if they jump in my face, I'm going to slap them. So when that response come out, it was prepared. The reason why the woman with the issue of blood was healed is because she was prepared to touch the hymn. She conceived in her mind who Jesus was. I'm not hearing y'all. And by the time she got up close to him, she didn't have to figure him out. I, oh, who am I talking to? She had conceived in her mind that if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I will be made whole. She did. Y'all, y'all sit down. She didn't just hear about a man coming to town. I'm gonna touch him. She said, that man Jesus coming to town. Watch this. And then she did her homework on him. And then she, and then she said in her brain, it was brought to her brain, he's a healer. And then she conceived based upon her need, I need healing. And she said, I'm going to save this. Good God have mercy. Lord have mercy. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to see him, but I'm going to save this. Who am I talking to? And by being saved in her mind, she pressed her way past the naysayers. She didn't care what they were saying. She didn't care what they thought. She pressed because it was conceived in her mind. And she could not get it out of her mind. My brain is telling me to reach for this man because I can't get my healing out of my mind. Okay. 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 That's why I know that people really don't want the victory that they say they want because if they did, they would study who has the answer. So by the time I come to you in prayer, it's already conceived in my mind. So I'm no longer praying my condition. I'm praying my results. Who am I talking to? I'm saying to the Lord, I know that you're able. And if you don't do it, I know that you can. We, we, we don't, we're talking about we want the victory. We don't know 
five scriptures about the victory. We're talking about we want peace of mind and we don't know five scriptures about peace of mind. We're talking about we want deliverance and we don't know nothing about deliverance. We're talking about we want healing and we don't even know a healing scripture by heart. Who am I talking to? Y'all ain't saying that. That's the reason why Shell Dose Reese is still alive. Because every time the doctor give up, she go to the word and the word is conceived in her mind. And watch this. Medical scientists have proved that whatever you put in your mind, that is your healing process it will start healing your body okay okay y'all y'all sit down y'all sit down y'all sit down uh, sit down sit down sit down see what you don't realize is while I'm preaching right now nobody in here has paused behind everything that I've said for 10 seconds and said I reject that. That means everything that I've said has gone into your memory and your deliverance has already started. Okay. I just want you to praise God for that without the organ. Your deliverance has already started. Your breakthrough has already started. What God promised you that he was going to do, you are activating that thing right now. Who am I talking to up in this building? Who am I preaching to by, by Facebook? Whatever you believe in God for, it's been conceived. Y'all yeah, yeah. sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down, y'all sit down. I, gotta, I, can't, I can't get ahead of myself. I got too far to go. So then it says, so then it says, uh, uh, uh. Be not, be not, be not conformed to this world, but be ye, wait a minute, be ye made a thorough and a dramatic change in the form and the appearance of your character. Be not conformed to this world, but be thoroughly changed by your appearance and by your character be not conform, but be ye transformed by the renewing not of your brain but of your mind so 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 i'm finna help us i'm finna help us so so i got all this stuff in my mind before i came to church i got all this stuff in my mind that I've been living with, I got all this bitterness and unforgiveness and hatred and disappointment that I that I got in my mind. I got in. My God, I just felt this. Uh, I got all this stuff in my mind, and so because the Lord really don't have time, because the end is coming, and He prophesied in Jeremiah one and five that you would be an instrument. So the only thing that can clear the mind in an instant is a word from God. So it's a prophecy. I'm not hearing y'all, and that's why the devil fight real prophets because when you prophesy you have a way of clearing the mind you don't hear me you have a way of knocking stuff out of the mind that the devil has planted there you don't hear what I'm saying who is God talking to you better open up your mouth that's why the devil trying to shut your mouth that's why the devil don't want you to prophesy over your life that's why the devil don't want you to prophesy I'm not hearing y'all talk to me because every time you say the said the Lord you write somebody's mind clean up all I will call Shia. Somebody shout up in here. Because the Bible said we are cleansed by the word. <laughs> and I just want to know is there a word from the Lord? Okay. Sit down. I got to finish. Sit down, I gotta finish. Come on. A prophet can speak to a spirit of torment that's been over your life, all of your life. And they can say, be at peace. And that torment spirit will dry up in your mind. Who am I talking to up in here? Because the word of the Lord is a converter. Who am I to? It changes you. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all sit down. 
Sit down. Let me just let me just get. Let me let me get to this part. Let me get to this part. Woo! My God! Let me get to this part. I got I got to calm myself down because I don't want to be in trouble. Because then I, I I'll be behind tomorrow. It's it's it, 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 this this this. this, this what was it? See, because, because, because the mind, the mind is invisible. So neuroplasticity says that there's a possibility that I can change my brain. So my brain can stop feeding my mind. So that my mind could stop feeding my brain. And then my brain could stop feeding my life. Okay, did you get that? So then, so then neuroplasticity said, I can change my brain. So my brain could stop speaking defilement to my mind. And then after my mind has saved it, my mind could stop giving orders back to my brain. And then my brain can stop messing up my life. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? So, so, what, what, what? what? So then that which I do out of repetition and thought and emotion will reinforce neural pathways. Watch this. And when frequently repeated, it will become my being. So I got to stop this right now. Because you keep trying to, you know what, I'm going to change. I got to stop this right now. Because somebody said, well, you know what, I'm, I'm 70 years old. I'm se it, it doesn't matter. The, the, the brain can, can be changed to the point that, watch this, it can change to the point that when it, when it feeds your mind the word of God, you'll start looking younger. You'll get your vitality back. You'll get, I'm not hearing y'all. All of your dreams will come back. Do you not know? Do you not know? Do you not know? That's why the scripture said, I can do all things. Not God can do all things, but I can do all things through Christ, through the word that strengthens me. So if I put the word in my brain and my brain sent it to my mind, I can do all things. There is nothing I can do. Oh, he preaching in here tonight. He preaching in here tonight. He just got rid of all excuses. I, I can run through a true bar. Can leap over the wall. I can start a business at 60. I can open up a beauty shop at 75. I, because there is no limitation, because I'm operating with a new mind. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the brain to change. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to help us real good now. Now, now it's going to get good. So the neurons in the brain are transmitters, and they transmit information. And um, Dr. Susanna Hosell has, has, has declared that there are 86 billion neurons in a human mind. There is. Now, see, that's why I have to disagree with some of these crazy people out here. A fruit fly has 100,000 neurons. A cockroach got 1 million neurons. A mouse has 75 million. A cat has 1 billion. A chimpanzee that they said we come from, he got 7 billion. An elephant got 23 billion. So if you're going to say I came from somebody, say I came from an elephant. <laughs> And, and, and the human has 86 billion, has the highest form of neurons, which means the human being has the ability at any given point, repeatedly, 86 billion neurons. You have that much opportunity to change your brain. 
So you crazy because you want to be. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You acting a fool because you want to be. Come on, somebody. No, ain't nothing wrong with you. You just lazy. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You reading the word like it's a book. I'm not hearing y'all, but you can't read it like it's a book. Come on. Come on, y'all. The word says when you receive the word from us, you receive it as if it was the living word of God and not just mere man. Who am I talking to? There is no more excuses. Who am I preaching to? Well, I don't, I just feel all disturbed today. Because Ephesians 4 and 23 says, And be ye continually renewed in the spirit of your mind. Continually. Not reading your Bible on Sunday and following the pastor with the scripture and you don't never pick it up during the week. Oh God. Y'all, y'all, I, 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 got, I got too far to go. Y'all got, cause see, cause see, watch this, watch this, y'all, watch this, watch this. Lord Jesus, this thing is wearing me out. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. So then how do I fix it? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then my mind is invisible. My brain is visible. My mind is invisible. Okay. So here we go, Apostle. Here we go. Here we go. It says, now, um, faith coming by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can you hear except you hear through a preacher? How can you preach except he be? How can he preach except he be sent? I didn't say how can he explain the Bible. Were you called to preach? Because if you weren't called to preach, then people are listening, but they're not hearing. <laughs> so then it says this. Watch this. Watch this. This this, this going to help us. It, then, then, then Colossians 3.16 said, let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you. Why did he say home? Because back in John 1 and 14 it said, and he was made flesh and took up residence in us. So where the word belongs is supposed to be at home in you. I came here so I can take up residence in you. Why am I evicted? Why am I outside? Why I ain't got no place to live? Why is it that all y'all keep visiting me on Sundays and wanting me to visit y'all and all of y'all fake worship and praise when I, can't, I ain't got no residence? Because my word is supposed to take up a home in you. It's supposed to live there. I'm not hearing y'all. I can't get nobody to talk back to me, so I'm going to come over here and just keep on reading the scripture. Uh, and they take up a home within you, dwelling in your heart and mine, watch this, Pen watch this, permeating every aspect of your being as you touch, as you teach spiritual things, permeate to spread throughout something. Wait. I, you know what, I just feel God, I, 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 I just can't stop doing, I, I be trying to permeate. Wait, wait, wait. Permeate. Permeate means to pervade. To pervade is to spread throughout and be perceived in every part of a thing. In other words, everything you do, I ought to be able to look at you and, and that's God. The way she talks is God. The way she walks is God. The way she dresses God. The way she prays God is God. The way she talks to people is God. That she kind like God. She love like God. I I'm not hearing y'all. Because see, we too fragmented. We too fragmented. Y'all, come on, somebody. There's no, there's no permeation. There's no permeation. No, I can't perceive God in all of you. In all of you. Uh, watch this. In all of you. And every door that you don't shut is an opportunity for the enemy to come in again and talk to your brain. Your brain talk to your mind. Your mind save it and then you crazy again. I, I, I don't hear y'all talking to me. I don't hear nobody talking. Pastor, I don't hear nobody talking to me. Apostle, they done got quiet. 
They done got quiet because he getting ready to crucify us now. No, we getting ready to get got in this next scripture. We getting ready to get got for real. I can tell you where your next sin going to be. I can tell you what's being saved in the spirit of your mind. I can tell you where you're going to fall next. If you don't have a word permeating that place, that's where you're going to fall. It ain't no, I don't, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 it don't work that way. It don't work that way. Because whatever part of you that's not permeate, the enemy has legal ground. You can't rebuke him on those grounds. Okay, I'm, I, see, I ain't going to... Jesus we know and Paul we know. Who are you? You can't, you can't rebuke me on the ground that the word don't own. No, he preaching up in here and I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to turn my back because y'all don't want to hear what God got to say up in here tonight. And I don't know who listening by television or radio or TV or wherever you listen to, but you don't have the authority to rebuke, to rebuke the enemy on your emotions. He is not stunting you. The devil is only recognizing those because the Bible said you're not powerful. He said powerful are they that know how to execute the word of God, not those that got a big mouth and jump and shout and in some kind of tongues. Who am I talking to? The Bible said that demons speak in tongues and they tremble. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Is he helping somebody? You don't have legal grounds. You're not an official rebuker. You have no authenticity. You have no authority. Jesus said, I've given you authority, but you can't use it for the part that you want to prostitute God with. You can't use it when you want a house, when you want a car. You got to use it for your sin. You can't departmentalize the word like that. Well, he my God, when he, when he healed my body, I just can't find him when I want to sleep with Junebug. And then I want to say I was tempted. Say to no man that I'm tempted. That is a result of conception. That is a result of you conceiving that and forming it, forming it in your mind. That's what comes out of you. That's not an oops I failed. That's an oops I imagined. My brain carried out. My poor brain. It carried out the thoughts of my mind. Because my brain decided to hold it for 10 seconds or more. My brain decided to play Russian roulette with it. Okay. Y'all ain't y'all ain't saying no. My brain decided to show sure would be nine, eight, seven, six. He show sure is five, five, four. She show sure look good. Three, two. If I can only, boom, it's yours. So look for it, because it's got to come out your mind. Unless you got a prophet that's going to take you through a deliverance. It's going to come out. Ten seconds, you own it. Ten seconds, you own it. 
So now, so now we are in a repetitive cycle, a repetitive cycle of, 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 of owning sin and using the word to make us feel better. I said that that way for a reason before I read this last scripture. Using the word and church to make us feel better. We ain't no instruments of nothing. He said, I called you to be a prophet to the nations. And that word prophet in that text does not mean to prophesy. It means to teach. I called your life to teach others how to come to me. And your life is teaching them confusion. Your life is teaching them weakness. Your life is teaching them, I I'm not hearing y'all, gradual deliverances. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me and you don't have to say nothing back because we're living in that generation that the heart gospel is not preached because most of us ain't free. I'm not hearing y'all. You can't preach a free people and you ain't free yourself. So the only gospel that can be preached to y'all is keep on coming, keep on trying, keep on holding on. That's enough the scripture. Watch this. I'm going to read this last scripture that I'm going. First John 2 and 20 said, God's teachings illuminates our mind and guides us from error. God's teachings illuminates our minds and guards us from error. You keep going in error, you ain't getting God's teachings. You getting somebody that's got the organ all tuned up and climbing octaves and you getting high. Thank God. Yeah. And Jesus going to work it out and he going to fix it. Yeah. And won't he do it? And y'all just... And right on back in the bed with somebody tomorrow, back lying, back gossiping, back cheating, back being a hypocrite. I'm not hearing y'all. It's time for the body of Christ to be free. And that's why I keep stopping the organ because he ain't calling me to sing. He's telling me to teach the word. I'm not hearing y'all. It's time for us to preach sound doctrine if you're going to have a sound mind. Sit down. I, I, my, 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 my time is up. I just got to read this. You can't get a sound man from A flat. You can't get a sound man from performance. You can't get a sound man from C sharp. You get a sound man from the word. Okay. So last scripture. So last scripture. Last scripture. We can't hold on to nothing because we ain't full of nothing. Let me help you with something. Let me help you with something before I read this last scripture. There's a, there's a, there's a mechanism that's in the brain that, that uh, uh, a pastor called the, 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 the mirroring effect. So right now, I'm standing here preaching to you and I'm looking at you. My brain just took a photograph of you. Y'all you, you, you don't, you, you don't hear me. My brain just took a photograph of you. Watch this. And if I keep being in your presence and they keep photographing you, it sends a message to my brain that says, be like that. That's why you can't get free because you're in the wrong company and your brain keep taking a picture of fornication and saying, be like that. 
I'm not hearing y'all. Your brain keep taking a uh, listen. Your brain keep taking a picture of weak-minded people and people that struggle and don't want to go in God and don't want to completely surrender to God. And it's telling your brain be like that. That's why I had to get some people away from me. That's why I had to step back because guess what? I don't want to mirror you. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? You got to put your vision in the place of somebody that's strong in God. You got to put your vision in the place of somebody that's going where you already want to go. You got to take a photograph of that so when you're not in their presence, you can become that. Who am I preaching to up in this place? Are y'all hearing God? You can't help it. It's photographed. That's why you look around at people and they come to the church and all of a sudden they start praising God like that person. They come in the church so sweet and all of a sudden something tainted about them because they're mirroring. I'm not hearing y'all. That's why on my brokest days, I go, I, I go to the high-end restaurant. Just bring me some tea because I, I need to sit up in here with all this money that's up in here. Y'all, y'all ain't saying that. I go out there on Northern Boulevard to my restaurant with billionaires and millionaires and, and sit down and talk to them people. I'm mirroring something. I don't want to be around no broke gossiping, talking about people. You ain't got nothing. You ain't going to never have nothing. And as a matter of fact, you dying as we speak. I'm not giving y'all talk to me. You can't do nothing for me and forget about being a friend. I don't need a friend. I need a mirror. Scientists have proven that if you want to know what you're going to be in five years, look at who's around you. And some of y'all ain't finna be nothing. You got to know when to let go. You got to know when to say enough is enough. You got to know when to change your vision. Who am I talking to up in here? Many people that are listening to me today, you're supposed to have high power careers. You're supposed to be wealthy, but you're too busy hanging on to broke people. You're too busy hanging on to messy people that all they want to do is sit up and talk about the church and what this one is doing and what that and what God don't care what they doing. And you come to church, come into a service like this. And because of the way that I'm preaching, the power of God is prophetically wiping your mind clean. And you're going to go right out here and get on the cell phone with somebody dumb. Y'all ain't got to talk back to me. Because everybody around me, you, they'll t I go to dinner by myself, I go to lunch by myself. Do I not, Pastor Roya? I get in my car, I get dressed up and go by myself. I don't want to be with nobody. I don't want you. I, no, no, no. When it's time for me to help you, I'll help you. But my help can't travel with me. You got to put yourself around people that you ain't got to help. You got to put yourself around people that you ain't got to help. You got to put yourself around your help rather than the people you got to help. Because they're draining from you. They're killing you. And then when you're out of their presence, you talking about them because you're sick of them. Now your DNA is changing. Now you got back problems and knee problems and now your chest is hurting. Now your left arm is hurting because you're sick of them wearing you out. And so when they ain't around you, now you hang up the phone and say, I'm so sick of them. You just started dying. I 
I, yo, 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 yo. I can't get nobody to talk back to me right now. You got to change your company. And you got to change it in a hurry. You can't come in here and let God give you a clean mind and you go back out there with the same foolishness. I'm not hearing y'all. Well, I love them. Love ain't nothing but a feeling, baby. That's all it is. It's a feeling and you will get another one. Y'all sit down. I got to go. 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 Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, I feel the presence of the Lord in here. I feel somebody getting free. I feel somebody getting free. Woo. Ah, he changing your mind. Somebody ought to turn around and tell somebody, ah, I told the devil I changed my mind. Hey, somebody change your mind. Somebody change your mind. Let me, let me, let me, let me read this. No, sometimes you got to just sit down and you got to just make a whole list. Got to make a list of everybody you know and say, then what do you do for me? And what do you do for me? And what do you do for me? This is all the stuff you do for me. This is all the stuff I do for you. This is all what you don't do for me. This is all of what I do for you. Something is not balanced right here. You are a liability, not an asset. No, oh, you got to leave out of here and tell people, look, I'm headed for a brain change. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Mm -mm, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. At first, I didn't want it, but I want it now. I changed my mind. At first, I wasn't going after what God told me I can have, but I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, while I'm preaching, your DNA is changing. While, while, while I'm preaching. While I'm preaching, your body is changing. While I'm preaching, you're getting your strength back. While I'm preaching, your mind, your brain is sending messages throughout your body saying, Heal! Heal! Get well! Get well! Get well! Take on strength! Take on courage! Who am I talking to right now? Let me just read this last part to you. Now you feel like you feel like you're breaking down in your body, all, all, that, all, that, all that negativity. I made up a new word, you being negatized. And negatized. Sometimes we got to put an eye in there. You know what I mean? You start feeling like I'm, 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 I just, you know, feeling all whatever. When God starts saying to me, I'm ready for you to preach this. I'm ready for you to set the captive free. I said, okay, God. I said, okay, God. He said, because if you don't teach this, even their prayers are hindered. They, 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 don't, they don't know how to function in their mind. People don't even, that's why the Bible says that we are to meditate on the word day and night. Meditate. Why we must meditate on the word day and night? Because we are constantly, repetitiously feeding the brain, and the brain is constantly and repetitiously feeding the mind. And when you leave out of that place for meditating, your mind is going to feed that back to your brain and your brain is going to give you an awesome life. Yeah. Felt like I was just, just, just breaking down. Just, now somebody somebody needs to receive that. I said an awesome life. Awesome life. You find yourself in... 65 going skydiving and all that like what, what what's that happen to me what's that happen to me because i've stopped dying now see y'all 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 i've stopped dying i went into the gym the other day and i was supposed to start with a trainer i started with a trainer a couple weeks ago and i, I went into the gym and the lady was asking me <clears throat> 
and God was saying to me, you know, I'm ready for you to stop preaching this now because you've been living there. A lady said to me, you know, that you fill out the form and you fill out the form and said, da, 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 da. And the lady said, how tall are you? I told her how tall I was. And she said, uh, okay, how much you weigh? I told her how much I weigh. She said, what you want to weigh? And I told her how much I want to weigh. She said, well, 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 how old are you? I said, how old am I in my mind? <laughs> or how old am I in the physical numbers? She looked at me and she said, how old are you in your mind? She said, because however old you think you are in your mind, that's what I'm going to be able to give you. I said, 35. When I tell you I've been killing it, that girl be looking at me like, you ain't no 60 years old. Uh-uh, because devil, I changed my mind. You don't hear me. Y'all ain't saying, you can get old if you want to. But I'm telling you, you can be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ain't nobody 60. Not over here. Not over here. Not the way I be pumping and can't. No, no, ain't nobody 60. Not, not here. Not yet. Not now. Watch this, y'all. Let me close with this. Let me close. With this. My, my, my time been up. Let me close with this. Sit down. Let me close with this, y'all. Y'all, let me. Y'all ain't trying to let me close. So I. I'm telling you, you're going to go out of this place and your people going to be coming. Well, I just wanted, you're going to hang the phone up, not you. Not you, not now, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to. Well, you know what they did that. Nope, nope, nope. Phone hanging up. Nope, nope. Negativity killing me, killing me, killing me, killing me, killing me. You're going to keep hearing my voice that it's killing you, killing you. And he gonna bring it all. The other day he brought my daddy to me and said, your daddy gone. I said, nope, 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 he dead. He dead, he gone, he out. Nope, nope. Ain't nobody crying. No, it's been 10 years. All right already. All right already, sir. He gone. You're not getting ready to put me back in that. I'm not going back in that. I'm not getting ready to sit in that grief. You don't hear me. You trying to kill me because you don't know my future, but you know my steps. Oh, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Uh-huh. He don't know your future, but he can recognize when you start stepping a different way. He can recognize when you change your direction. Then his job is to bring back to you what paralyzes you. No, my daddy used to keep me on the couch for two and three days. And then when it was time for the time of the year that, that, that he died, nobody called me. I said, no, we're not doing this anymore. I'm being renewed in the spirit of my mind. You're not going to take me to the grave. He's dead and gone. He ain't coming back. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The devil will try to torment you. So, oh, your mother's sick and one day. She, I said, yes, yeah, she's going to die too one day. Mm -hmm. been, been, been in this world for more than 80 years. Yes, I'm going to miss her, but you ain't going to take me down because you ain't going to threaten me with that no more either. Well, if you go all the way in God, I'm going to kill your mama. You can't kill nobody. You can't take nobody. And when she lay down and die, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to cry, but I'm not going to go to that place in my mind. Because you mad because I got a new mind. Y'all cannot. Get, what time is it? I got to go. I got. Y'all want me to stop? Just let me do this last little part right here.
This last little part. Y'all sit down and be good and I'll do this last little part. Do this last little part. And he said to me, not only are you going to teach it tomorrow, but you're going to start back to teaching this every Tuesday. I changed my mind. Turn around and tell three people I changed my mind. Turn around and tell three people I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Change my mind. Change my mind. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Going on to my destiny. Hebrews 8 and 10, and we're going to close with this. Lord, have mercy. How y'all feeling? Feeling, feeling free. I mean, I sleep better at night. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I sleep better. My food ain't all stuck in my upper gut because I'm all stressed. And this is why. Let me close with this. This is why. Y'all, I promise you this thing works. Listen to this. Listen to this. For this, Hebrews 8 and 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, saith the Lord. And we are the spiritual Israel. Listen to this, y'all. I will, I will imprint my laws upon their mind. Even upon the innermost thoughts and understanding. And engrave them upon their hearts, affecting their regeneration. Y'all, yeah, watch this, watch this, watch. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. Now, 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 now. This, this right here, this right here made me just holler out in my house tonight. It, 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 just, it just made me holler. So then, 8 and 10 says... I will imprint it on their minds. And even in the deepest part of their understanding. Why? Because the Bible tells us, I gotta, gotta read this to you. Because, 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 because the scripture says, I gotta give, I, I, I gotta give you your, 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 your Bible. It, 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 says, it says here, and to depart, and to depart, yeah, uh, that's Job 28, 28 and, 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 and 20, 28 and 28. And it said, but the, but to man, he said, behold the reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So if I hear the word and it's not being implanted in me and I don't understand it, I won't stop sinning. To understand it is to cease from evil. Not God bring me out. You stop. So when I have understanding, I cease from, I cease from evil. But watch this. So how does that happen? Because Job 32 and 8 says, there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives man understanding. Which means if you teach this Bible and there is no anointing, they will hear a lesson. But they will not have understanding. Because understanding is what moves you. Okay, 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 okay. So understanding, understanding causes movement. When I, when I, when I understand, I, I, I move in healing. When I understand that I am, that I am healed, I, I move in healing. When I understand that I am free, I'm moving freedom. When I understand that I am saved, I cease from evil. And the reason why I'm able to do these things because I have the wind and the breath of the Holy Spirit breathing on my understanding, causing me to be able to move. Okay. That's why you can't sit under, as my daddy said, no gripe preaching. He said, "Gry." He couldn't say, "Dry." 
can't sit under no grab preaching. Because that, that don't bring you understanding. That give you a good Bible lesson. But it ain't doing nothing to the spirit of your mind. Now, 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 now watch, watch how this can look like it's, 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 it's contradicting itself. Because Hebrews 8 and 10 says, and I will imprint it on your mind and engrave it, engrave it in your heart. And then 8 and 16 says, I will, I will imprint it on your heart, but inscribe it on your mind. So like, really, which is it? Which one am I getting and why? Now watch this. This going to bless you. Because I'm going to engrave it on your heart. Listen to this. Because when I engrave it on your heart, it's going to produce regeneration. Engraved when I carve it in there like a fossil where you can't wipe it off. That's why you go out there getting high, but you can still hear the word talking in you. That's why you out there knowing that you're doing something wrong, but you can't get it out of your heart. I'm not hearing y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Regeneration of a living organism to regrow new tissues. To replace that which is lost or have been injured. To bring into a renewed existence. To bring new and more vigorous life to an area or an institution. To revive. For a Christian to give a new and higher spiritual nature. Y'all ain't saying nothing. To be reformed. To bring about a change in someone. So that they no longer behave in a manner of a criminal. Watch this. Or in a self-destructive manner to be reborn, have an experience, a complete spiritual change. So when I, when I engrave it in your heart, <laughs> I renew your tissues. When I engrave it in your heart, I regenerate you. I revive you. Your skin look different. I start restoring the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten. Y'all, 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 come on, 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 come on. He said, I got to engrave it there. So then why are you going to inscribe it in my mind? Because then the scripture said, I'm going to imprint it on your heart. And inscribe it, carve it in your mind for what purpose? The scripture said, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a in in, in carve it, I'm inscribe it in your mind for inner change. So I can engrave it in your heart and convert the heart, but I can't see change until I carve it in your mind. Because it's in your mind that's gonna call you to change. That's why people keep getting saved every Sunday. Because you will hear the word and it will regenerate your heart. But if it don't get in your mind, you won't change. Then you will go and sin and have to come back to the altar again and say, Lord, regenerate me. So now we are in a vicious cycle of regeneration, but we're not in change. If I engrave it in your heart, I can get you saved. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I need your mind to get you changed. So we come to the altar and say, Lord, I surrender my heart, but I just don't surrender my mind. So my, so my, so my mind keeps backsliding my heart. So that's where we get the new doctrine. And you can't judge me because God knows what's in my heart, but we know what's in your mind.
Because we can't see your heart, but we can see your mind. So the word has not permeated you. Because it's not flowing through all parts of your body. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. There's a reason why he said man looks on the outside, but God sees the heart. Because God know what he did to your heart, but man know what he did to your mind. And that's nothing. That's why he said, not let this heart be in you, but let this mind be in you. Because I can fix your heart, but I can't change you without your mind. See, see, see. See, 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 see the scripture tells us that, 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 that we're, not to, we're not to pay attention to, 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 to people who are, who are deprived in their understanding. Deprived. Let, 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 let me close it. Deprived. To, now this deprived to, 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 to remove from having the ability to make me disabled, deprived of, of legal power to, to act in a specified way. And, and you, you take away my authority because he said he, he's given me all power over every evil spirit. And so when I, when I am deprived of his word, listen to this, it, it, it means to, to remove or withhold something from enjoyment or possession of a person. But I kept reading down that thing and, 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 and it got me so bad because it said here that the word deprived apostle also means to remove, to, to, to remove one from the ecclesiastical position and clergy, which means when a person is deprived in their spirit, they talk you out of submitting to the word of God and they remove you from the ecclesiastical order of God and they make you reject the clergy. That's the people that said, why you go to church all the time? And y'all still in prayer? And y'all having another fast? And y'all on y'all went another consecration? And y'all pastor got y'all in church how long? And y'all still in church? And y'all shouting and y'all, uh -uh, because you're deprived. So now you're trying to remove me from my ecclesiastical permission. You're trying to remove me from the clergy. You're trying to remove me from the clergy. You're trying to remove me from the clergy. Why is that important? Because how can I hear except I hear through a preacher? And how can he preach except they be sent? I'm not hearing y'all, which means now I have a hearing problem. And when I have a hearing problem, I have a perception problem. When I have a perception problem, my brain in my hippocampus is not calculating things right. I'm off. And so I'm feeding off information to my mind. And my mind is telling me they just trying to control you. They just trying to control you. So I cannot see that they're trying to keep me alive because my perception is off. And I'm feeding my mind the wrong thing. And that's why I'm acting like somebody that's crazy. Now you can play some. <laughs> I'm dead serious about that thing. Nobody gonna music me up. Cause we got too many people that's sitting in the body of Christ with a mind problem. We got people killing themselves. We got people shouting, hallelujah, praise God, and tormented. Good Lord, have mercy. You got people that don't know how to fix that. Good Lord, have mercy. They don't know what's wrong. They don't know if my, my mind is in trouble, is my brain in trouble. Y -y 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 they don't know how to decipher, how do, how do I handle all of this? What do I do with all of this? 
So how am I renewed in the spirit of my mind? Because how can you permit something to try to help you with your mind when it's not the creator of your mind? My daddy taught me this a long time ago. Yeah. When I bought my first car, he said, you don't take your car to a car shop to get it fixed. That's right. You take it back to Mercedes because they built it. That's right. And they know the car. And our problem is we keep trying to take our mind to people who didn't create our mind. And we kept trying to fix our mind with stuff. When mind, when the mind is invisible, y'all ain't saying that. You can't fix your mind with a car. A new car ain't gonna help your mind. Money ain't gonna help your mind. Watch this, watch this. I'm talking, I'm talking. That's why the Bible said this. That's why the Bible said this in, 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 in John 6 and 63. It says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life because the mind is a spirit and you can't fix a spirit with the flesh. You got to get another spirit to speak the spirit. And that's why the word is just not words. It's a spirit. So when God's talking, it's a spirit that's going in. While I'm preaching, a spirit went in your mind. And it attacked the foul spirit that was already there. And that's how you know you're being made whole. Who am I talking to right now? Somebody better say something up in here. That's why you can be assured that your shouting ain't fake. That your praising God ain't fake. Because the spirit of the word is going in the spirit of your mind. And bringing you into divine deliverance. Who am I talking to? You can't get a free mind until you get the word. It's the only thing that can fix your mind. Because it's what's made your mind. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? So, so, you, so you go, you gonna stay crazy. You gonna stay confused. You gonna stay with all these wandering thoughts all over your head. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna stay like somebody jumpy and psychotic. You, you gonna be like this until, until the, until the word of God whew, land in your mind. And, 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 and. and. And then, and then, watch this. And then, and then it 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 produces its own the dopamine. It it, it it produces its own calming, calming. The word of God, the word of God does that because He's the Creator of this being, and so He's the only one that can calm it down. He's the only one that can bring peace to it, and He's the only one that can make that can watch this. That when you hear the word, he's the only one that can trigger that chemical in the brain that releases that chemical that comes down to your frontal lobe that says, I'm in peace. Do you, you know? I'm at peace. I'm at peace is not just a spirit. There is a chemical in the body that he has created that is a peace chemical. And that chemical cannot be triggered until the mind is at peace. And nothing can calm the mind like the creator of the mind. And that's why he said the words that I speak. That's why he said in Colossians, I want you to hear the spoken word. Because it's the spoken word of God that, 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 that y'all didn't say that, 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 that brings life. And see, Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve got off. They got off. Because guess what? It was a lot of animals doing a whole lot of things. Because if the serpent can talk, maybe the cow could talk too. There was, was a whole lot, of, whole lot of stuff going on that night. Come on, somebody. It's a whole, whole lot of things being done. Birds chirping and, and fish jumping and, and waterfalls wishing. I mean, you know, it could have been a wave that could have talked. A, 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 lot, a lot of stuff because creation was new and, and, and it, everything was functioning on this, on this own functionality. But, but, but what happened to them is that, is that the serpent got in the spirit of the man. That's what offended God. You, you, you let what I created tamper with my mind. 
I blew my mind in you. And how I knew you had messed up because now I'm having thoughts that don't belong to me as God. I know that the serpent got into the brain and caused them to want knowledge that they did not need. <laughs> and then the brain didn't reject it in 10 seconds. And it housed it in the mind. And now they were messed up in the mind. But then the Bible said, and then Adam lived to be 130 years old. Watch this. And he had a son. And it says, and the son was created in Adam's image, in his likeness. So now we are a result of that likeness. And so in order to be regenerated, we got to let him carve the word back in our mind. And the only way he can do that, we got to meditate on it day and night. I don't even know what to say about it. Gotta meditate. Why am I meditating? Because I'm carving. I'm carving this thing in my mind until it becomes a natural reflex. So my staff say to me all the time, everything that happens, you just stay so calm because it's a prepared response. I'm prepared. It's a prepared response because it's natural now. When I did get a therapist, even she said, you amaze me because it's like you, you just won't quit. That wasn't me. It was my carving. It was, wait a minute. It was the fact that the brain has neural pathways, carvings in it. And whatever behavior you repeat repetitively, it carves a passageway. Now I'm finna, I'm finna bless you so good right now. I'm finna, I'm finna prove to you that what I said to you about the prophetic word of God being able to blast things, I'm, I'm finna prove it to you right now. The neural pathways in the brain is highways that's been cut by repetitive behavior. So the reason why I can't get out of the chaotic loop is because I've carved that in my brain by repetitive behavior. Now, because the Lord desires for you to be free and the Lord is so gracious and he's so merciful. The way you are in a defiled way, in a disruptive way, in a self-destructive way, it has taken years for you to carve your brain like that. It has taken years for you to develop that behavior. And some of it is behaviors of, of, of rejection and neglect. And so you, you, you act out. Years. But how do I know you can be made whole? Because. <laughs> years. You've been like that. But because the word of God, Dr. Burris, is the longest living entity, entity and the firstborn of all creation. Because the book of Colossians says that everything that was made was made by him and for him and through him. And that nothing exists without him. Because Colossians says this too, that all things are held together by him. Which means you're not going to have a breakdown if you got him because all things are held together by him. Now, 
how do I know that he can cut a passageway in your brain to set you free because the word of God is the longest living entity in the world in the stratosphere in the chemistry of all the fears of the universe throughout eternity he can speak one word that can cut a passageway in your brain like it's been there for years you don't hear me you don't hear me that's why the devil don't want you to read the Bible because it's the only thing that can cut a passageway of deliverance and get you out and you'll listen that's the reason why when you get saved for real and you hear the word for real you change instantly the way you used to live you don't live no more the way you used to walk and talk you don't walk and talk like that anymore why because the word of God has cut a new narrow pathway in my brain and it cut a highway for me to get out that's the mystery of the word it can do for you in a second what you couldn't do in years it can wipe away years it don't take long to be free it takes a word to be free